Miami blue, Miami weather, Miami shirt and the Porsche 718 Boxster in our full review and auto gefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with Thomas. This one here, exterior, interior and the driving experience with this very model and also we're going to talk about differences, Boxster, Boxster S, Boxster Cayman, Boxster 911, 718 is the new name since the facelift or product update. It will tell you everything you need to know about this very vehicle. Let's enjoy this sunny episode together in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Driving preview. A special riding up the hill, of course, with open top. <laughs> and we also go to the Sport Plus mode to show you the handling genius here. So the electronic stability program is drawn back now a little bit. Gives me a little bit more flexibility. Got the direct connection to the road. Steering wheel feels very natural. At the same time it's direct and progressive enough. You see they don't have to turn the steering wheel too much to match the corners. No tilting at all from the car. To me, this one here, the Boxer and the Cayman, are probably the best handy cars overall. Yes, this one here is better than the 911 as for the handling. We got the midship engine concept. It's better weight distribution. Of course, classic rear wheel drive here. And the sound is also quite nice. I mean, it's not a Sonora 6 cylinder sound, no. But I mean, why not? And we have got the active exhaust. So why not? Shift down with some pedals. Lop. Next corner, perfect control of the vehicle. And if you, for example, if you want to really you know, um, push it around, first gear, hammer throttle. Then you also heard probably a little bit of tire scream. You could put the car around just a little bit, but there was pretty much grip still. Of course, this stuff you can do better when you have the manual drive. Then you can play a little bit with clutch. Of course, the PDK, as we've mounted here, is the more comfortable choice for everyday driving. Hope you enjoyed this small preview. Let's continue with our main review. Now the few subscribers know that very strong blue colors are called Thomas Blue here as it's my favorite color. This one here is even further than Thomas Blue. This is screaming out even more and I, I would think, I mean, it's probably a love or hate color. I love it. It has so much. It's really fitting to the name Miami Blue. When you see this vehicle, you immediately think, you know, of summer, sunshine, pleasure in life. What do you think? I want to hear your comments on that one. Then the headlights, they come with uh, Xenon first, as we are here also. Optional, you get them in LED. In our other Porsche Boxster review from the new 718 model, you can see those four dots. Also, we've shown you that once, that one were the optional LED lights then. Yeah, a new name, you got the 718 name now. Um, because they always, you know, want to align it also with the 911, for example, to get it a special number. The original 780 car you can also check out in our other Boxer review. But here today, another vehicle, new chance for this one here. It will surely be exciting. In general, such a sporty layout, you know, the Porsche design is all about wrapping everything very tight, as you would have a model. And then, you know, get some, you know, foil or something and wrap it very strongly around it. And that's all which is designing Porsche design from the very, very first model, even from the VW Beetle, which was basically the first Porsche. 
1 meters 38 or 14 foot 4 is the total length of the Porsche 718 Boxster. So it's not a really big car, but also not so much smaller than the 911, but way cheaper. 45,000 euros it starts in Germany, the 911 is about double the price. But this one here can also be very expensive. I will tell you later which is the real price for this very test vehicle, although it was the cheapest one they had in the test pool. It's incredible, I can tell you. You see the fuel cap is right here in the, in the front. You get 18, 19 or 20 inch rims, 18 with the normal Boxster, 19 as we see here, optional or automatically with the Boxster S. This one is a normal Boxster, but a lot of elements are just optional from the price list, which are included in the Boxster S. So this one here is, let's say, a Boxster engine with the Boxster S package. You could take it that way. Other than that, very simplistic design. You see the air intakes for the midship engine concept. This one also the difference to the 911. 911 has the engine in the rear. This one here right in the middle, basically behind the seats. You cannot really access it. It is accessed from below in the workshop. And you see how few design lines they are employing. But this makes this vehicle also so timeless. Very interesting sculpture like tail lights here. And also this has been redesigned with the pro update, the middle part here that we have uh, you know, the, the transition between both taillights and of course also now a 718 logo. The exhaust have been centralized and if you go for the optional sports exhaust then you will get this one, that's the optional one. You can get that both for normal and the Boxster S and then you have two pipes and still centered and this one gives you a little bit more sound. You know there have been a lot of discussion about the sound because the engines have been changed with this program update to all four cylinders. If you have the optional sport exhaust, however, and activate them, you still get a very sonorous sound. However, if you go for the basic one and don't activate the exhaust valve, then it is indeed rather silent, which is also an advantage if you think about, you know, other people surrounding you, of course. The key is very light, formed like a 911 or maybe also as a Cayman. Still always a nice feature and you can open both hatches with them. Well, well, you know, the front and the rear. And let's take a look at the engine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Who knows something about Porsche? Uh, you, you can't fool <laughs> anyone then. Maybe someone. But of course, there's no engine in the front. This is uh, the first boot. The 911 all only has that one. Here, for example, also for trolleys, suitcases and stuff. It's, um, it's really quite spacious. It's really okay. So um, also if you compare other competitors in this segment, they are the bo box that basically leads it because of the two trunks. Uh, for wiper, uh, wiper fluid is right in the front here, for example, uh, but there's not that much else here. Well, you have to release it always here. So um, for a quick access, the rear one is better. Here the two-way closing process and let's hop on to the rear. So and here we go, we can also open it with the key and you see there's no special release so it's basically easier to do it that way. So there's some more space right there, not as you know a little bit shallow but quite handy and then you can see there's some fluid oil and uh, water um, entry for the engines and where do we have that now? It's really the midship concept, you cannot see it. Four cylinders, flat engine, two liter of displacement here with 300 horsepower, 4.7 seconds acceleration or 2.5 liter, 350 horsepower and 4.2 seconds of acceleration with the Boxster S. And so there is a difference between the Boxster and the Boxster S, also acceleration wise. We have driven both already and you don't feel the biggest difference in driving. It, I think it's rather different if you go for manual or with, or PDK with the automatic dual clutch transmission version. That one creates a different riding feeling a little bit, you know, more comfortable or more purist. Um, you can also save your money and just go for the non-S version. Yes, the S gives you a little bit more horsepower. You do feel that, but it wouldn't be a total game changer if you ask me, because I mean, if you have a PDK, you could always also manual shift down. If you have the normal menu gearbox, you can, of course, do it. And then it's more about, do you keep this car in a lower gear, for example? Um, from the driving serenity, 
the previous version from the Cayman, for example, we've driven with a six cylinder. Um, yes, I think the sound is maybe a little bit better. Um, it gives you a little bit more sovereignty in driving from the pure feeling. But then again, those ones here, the turbo versions of Boxster and Cayman now, they are faster on paper because they have the turbo. The turbo will give you more performance. That's out of question. It's also a little bit, you know, question of philosophy. Let's get inside here. See the doors, they don't open too wide actually. Then everything wrapped very strongly here too. High class build quality. Memory seat function too. And the windows for both sides. This one here is, you know, rather slim. Maybe sunglasses, box or so. And then here's another small space. But of course, not too many storage spaces here in this very vehicle. Here in the lower part, Boxster entry cap, that's nice. Here you can also access or open the, the front and the rear hatch. And then rest of the interior, here we go. Really sporty, of course, very nice. Here the steering wheel without any buttons. There are also steering wheels with multifunction buttons available. This one here more for a sporty purist. Then with a new drive selector since the update, we'll talk about different driving modes when we drive the car. Also, the air vents have been updated. They are a little bit more prominent here. Key still on the left side. The seats, they start with a normal seat. So the standard seat would be, would be going like this, approximately. In Germany, it starts with Alcantara on the inside and leatherette on the outside. Top choice. In the US, you get a part animal skin seat so part is uh, leather red part is animal skin then this one here is the sport plus seat you can see it here it has stronger sho shoulder bolsters right there um, it gives you better you know hold on the racetrack but we, we usually say just go with the basic seats save money and you also have more choices then because those ones here are only available as they are right here and there's also sport tax available with the fabric on the inside and leather right on the outside. You can see those in the, our Porsche Cayman video. Those ones are the greatest seats to me. I love them. But the strange thing is that then on the dashboard and on the inside of the doors, you get animal skin then. And I mean, why? I mean, if people are really interested in fabric seats and say, I go for that option, why would you change the dashboard and the inside of the doors? And because usually in the base box star, this is from leather red and no one could tell the difference. Strange product strategy, but at least we see that they're going forward with the Boxster and offering more um, alternatives than in the 911. The steering wheel can also be wrapped in Alcantara. And yes, there is a discussion about, yeah, it wears out uh, very fast, but everyone I know who has Alcantara steering wheel and seats really love them. And I mean, if you buy this vehicle for so much money and you, know, you can also clean Alcantara with a brush and some water, and at some point you can also, you know, Rewrap it, for example, when it's really getting that bad. Three gauges here, a classic round Porsche style. I also have the G-Force meter mounted there. The RPM is always the biggest one. Then a digital speed, you can see everything very well then, for sure. And the right screen, you can, for example, also um, mount the speed limit, um, temperatures and stuff, Bluetooth. You can also have the GPS in your direct view there. Cockpit overview, you can see here the new air vents, they pop out stronger with the Sport Chromo package. Here you also have the analog clock, it's an emotional element. Then everything here again is so tightly wrapped, great build quality and matches also the exterior. Those ones would be the bottle holders, right there, also adaptive, but it's a little bit loose if the bottles are too um, too heavy, it's rather, you know, for, uh, for a coffee cup or something like that. 
new infotainment system. I really like it. See with a proximity sensor and you can also use the capacitive function scroll. Wow, it's really getting hot when it's also hot outside. You can hardly touch it, it's so hot. And um, also different functions available. For example, uh, this is the home app view. You can have uh, Apple CarPlay and stuff, but also just connect your phone via Bluetooth, for example. Overall, a good performance. I really like it. And you see it's rather shallow. It's aligned with the rest of the interior. Volume knobs still done manually. Temperature also with a separate function here. It's a little bit complicated. I think it sometimes takes a little bit long, um, but it's classic, you know, standard Porsche and you still have it separated. Why not for some, you know, I really like it when it's still separated. Here the PDK, there's also a manual gearbox available, but here with the PDK you just put it backwards in the, in the driving mode and that's basically it. Here you can stiffen the suspension a little bit or draw back the electronic stability control. It is also automatically done um, when you go into those uh, sports mode. Here for example when I go to the sports mode you see also the exhaust uh, valve is being activated from the sport exhaust. And in the Sport Plus mode, you can see then also the stiffer suspension is activated. And you can also activate here the rear spoiler. Usually it is done automatically, you know, at higher speeds and at lower speeds it goes back again. And of course, the most important thing about the convertible is to open or close the roof. Some storage you at least have under the armrest. This one, by the way, a purse in leatherette. You still don't see, you know, the difference. It's really great material. And you see here, <laughs> iPhone 5 cover in cork. Also nice and also natural material without animal hurting. So, and USB port right there to charge your smartphone. And you see also height-wise, it works when you got, um, you know, some stuff put in right there. Now to the normal driving part and start stop is at the moment activated but when I go to the sport mode the car also comes to life and it's activating the exhaust valve and that means we also have some more sound when we accelerate. I would say this is really nice. However, at the same time, when you think about, you know, in a neighborhood, something like that, so one of the drives calmly, you just put it in the normal driving mode, and when you push the throttle then, it still comes with the sound when you handle the throttle. However, if you stay in the low RPM regions, there's hardly anything. So, you really have the choice. Now here on the motorway we can also tell you something about the wind features, uh, the windows are raised up and this one is not exactly an all season convertible, it's a rather a convertible which you want to have in really summertime. At the moment it's really hot, 27 degrees Celsius, if you want to know how it's in Fahrenheit, just put in 27 C in Fahrenheit and you get it. And uh, you see there will be a lot of wind coming in here at the moment and when it's hot it's no problem at all. But it's not as in a mid-size segment when you have those mid-size segment convertibles where it's really getting cold. 120 kilometers an hour we're driving at the moment. This will not be pleasant in winter times and it's also getting very loud in here. So it's really pure, um, you know, a pure summer convertible for sure. Also on the motorway, which is really good, then you, when you go into the normal mode, you can really drive also with the closed top. We will soon show you an autobahn riding part with the closed top, our sound insulation. The good thing is you can remain silent if you want to. Remember by the way the F-Type, even if you don't have the exhaust valve activated, as soon as you go over 4000 RPMs, it's really so loud inside the car that after a while you say, oh you know, that's not really pleasant for a four hour motorway ride for example. And this one here suspension wise also gives you enough comfort. Of course, it's not the vehicle to go on long road trips because it's a rather small car with a low seating position and therefore sure cars that offer way more comfort. But suspension wise, this one here is also a very good balance. We got the PASM mounted here, the Porsche Active Suspension Management. 
20 millimeters lower the vehicle. However, you will also be just fine with the standard suspension because, as I said initially, this one is a vehicle from Porsche you can really buy naked, pure, for the pure sports car experience and keep the price low. It doesn't have to be all of the extras. And we, you know, I told you earlier, this one was the vehicle with the lowest list price in the Porsche test vehicle pool. <laughs> it's still 80,000, come on, why? <laughs> so, riding in the city, of course, everyone is looking because of the Miami blue color. And I mean, it's so amazing, this color. And we, I just went to, uh, to the car wash, also to clean the car all the way out. The, the car is really screaming out. Also, when you look to the front, you see those central lines above the headlights from your riding perspective, also here from our small camera. And really, one of my favorite things is that this can also be a cruiser. This can be a purist sports car, a stiff one, especially if you go to the Sport Plus mode, for example. You can always drive it, select it at the steering wheel. Sound turns up, but at the same time, it can be a cruiser. When you go into normal driving mode and you ride rather silently, and have really good comfort from the suspension. Of course, you always feel it's a sport car and you always have the direct connection to the road, even when riding inside the city. Such direct feeling, feedback, without feeling artificial at all. So they really figured out that well. This one here, as I also mentioned in the very first driving preview, riding up our hill, this is the handling car to me, overall, together with the Cayman. When you're normal drive, you don't really feel much difference from Cayman to Boxster. This would rather, rather appear on the racetrack where then the stiffness plays a role. But normal driving life, there won't really be um, you know, much indifference as for that. The overview, by the way, I mean, it's a small car, so you really see where the car is ending, even though um, to the rear you have you know, to estimate a little bit there was no rear view camera mounted with here, but the PDC is enough because you basically know where the car is ending as it's, as it's really short and, and tiny. But then again, this size, of course, accounts for the superb handling. It's just such a pure enjoyment, especially on short or mid-term trips where you can enjoy the sun and just, you know, very probably positive reactions also to this car. The 911 also looks a little bit more aggressive, a little bit bulkier. This one here, especially in that color, really a lot of positive reactions we're getting. So, and we are also approaching our next um, motorway part where we talk about riding with the closed top. So, um, you can also close it while driving. Why can we can wait for that? Because it works up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. That's quite nice. And also working quite fast because it's a short top and therefore I will give you the pleasure really to do it while we are driving. Also, by the way, the new infotainment system, you can easier control it also while driving because everything is working faster, for example. You see also that we got the steering wheel where we don't have any buttons mounted. All is hidden behind the columns. I'll soon talk about the ACC. I got the G-Force meter mounted also in the instruments. Not too much G-Force applied here at the moment though. <laughs> so, and now we're driving 40 and you see, I can still close the roof and imagine it would be starting to rain now. And that's what I hate about hardtop convertibles. You have no chance to do that when it rains, um, you know. And yeah, that'll, 45 and it's closed. It's, it's really awesome. So um, I, I really loved it. Of course, there's a big difference now in the sound insulation. However, if you want to hear the engine sound, because the engine is right here next to us, this one is still possible. And again, when you're in a normal driving mode, sometimes you feel, is this maybe, are you riding a vintage VW Beetle? Also, you know, the four cylinder sound. Yes, I know it's not that sonorous when the valve is not mounted, but then again, what I found very interesting, this car is, is a very modern sports car, but at the same time, it gives you somewhat a feeling of riding a characteristical vintage sports car. And that was, you know, when someone said, I love vintage cars, I love the style and stuff, and you know, the heritage, the characteristics, but I want riding-wise a very modern car. 
this can also be you know a reason for that one here and here going to the sports mode you do, do you i'm not sure if you're hearing it on camera i mean you don't have like 3d sound as we have with our own ears but i can tell you you really hear that this engine is mounted behind you you just hear that you know it's you know, no miracle of course but it's something very interesting and that also leads to the fact that you especially hear it also when the roof is closed of course you can as always hear use the shifting shifting pedals right there very well reachable then you can also you know because in normal driving mode sometimes you may be in the gear too high for fuel saving reasons and then you can also control it by that here however if you're in the sports mode or sports plus mode the gear shifting is changed anyway so the car shifts up later and down again earlier and no matter which speed this car has so superb handling again i can just stress that of course it's more comfortable with the um, here again normal driver relax just let the car roll we did manage to score eight liters on 100 kilometers for consumption that's really good really good for a sports car if you want to do so no problem to reach it if you're more you know pushing the throttle a little bit more then you rather climb up to about 10 liters and 80 to 100 is just like oh, that's it so um, you definitely have the power of a six cylinder or more and you know that with the product update the acceleration figures went better you know so you don't lose any power so good acceleration on the motorway um, especially when you're in the sport plus mode at 100 i mean sound insulation is fairly good for convertible here that's okay but i mean of course we also think it's way more silent here now because of the difference we had from riding with the open top using the lower column here that sets the cruise control in this case just a normal one is mounted and then of course the speed is maintained and you can also relax and that's again point when you really have you know then say I want this as a primary vehicle I just can afford one vehicle I mean it's expensive enough it kind of always works with this one too if you don't have a big family because you have those both two trunks which can really have some stuff in that and then you have you know the, you can close the top for the motorway and this car can be really silent and comfortable also just right here in a situation like this setting the cruise control to 100 kilometers an hour having a suspension which really taking care of of the harsh bumps and then you see we're riding under 2000 rpm in at 100 kilometers even though it's going a little bit uphill you know and that makes you seventh gear by the way and that gives you the possibility you really to relax a little bit and sometimes we have sports cars where that's not possible where you know you're, you're always basically challenged to you know do something <laughs> hammer the throttle even more for example but here it's really really well done the mirrors are by the way split so there's uh, not such a big blind spot they look tiny but actually they give you a good overview of what's coming behind you the small wind deflector we have mounted behind us is not doing the biggest effect but it's there i mean and you can also still look through the net quite well so there's actually not a problem so some people say it's a parking lot always fun to use the manual shifting pedals also when you're in the normal driving mode the biggest difference between the driving modes is also how the electronic stability program is being set. If it's rather drawn back or if it really reduces your, you know, playing around with the vehicle. In normal driving mode, you start when you don't, do not know the car very well, when you gotta learn it first, for example, and not have so much experience. And the sport mode then, I mean, when it's dry, it's not the biggest difference then. In the sport plus mode 
rather for the racetrack or if you really know how to ride this vehicle. I know. <laughs> Therefore I can use it. Here also with uh, you know this uh, throttle blit function when you're in sport plus mode reduced speed you get it. So ref matching then which is done automatically. I have driven the Boxster or the Cayman also with the manual gearbox. It gives you more purest feeling, so that could be something for you then if you like that. However, this one here with the PDK Porsche Dual Clutch, clutch Transmission is more comfortable. In the Sport Plus mode, when you're doing like this, giving a little throttle and really steering in, you feel that even at dry roads, you are able to throw the car around just a little bit. If you want to see this car in real action, also check out our initial review from the launch. A big Boxster review, we are also comparing S and non-S version there. And we went to an airfield where I really spin the car around. So um, we're not doing that on public roads. It's not safe enough. Other reviewers can do that who think they have to compensate something. But we're do only doing that in very safe surroundings as Auto Gefühl is also always about safety first, of course. We do give you emotions, we do give you fun, but never on the cost of safety of other participants here on the road and of course also ourselves. And we also don't, don't want, you know, maybe any children watching and hey, this Thomas Auto Gefühl guy is doing uh, donuts on public roads uh, when I'm when I'm old enough, I'll do that shit myself, you know. So you can do that on uh, open air, old airfields, you know, when they're not used, that's okay. You don't harm anyone then, maybe the tires, but that's it. So check it out, that one. So um, the main thing is that you can play around with this vehicle so much, you can put it right and left and it always follows your command. And that gives you, of course, the pleasure in every day riding this car as well. And now the conclusion for the day, Porsche 718 Boxer. I mean, especially here in Miami Blue. What a lovely vehicle, just from the you know, emotional part. The design, I think, is really such a beautiful car. Of course, beauty is always in, the, you know, in your perspective, but this one also has you know, so much character. I think it's design-wise even, to me, a little bit better than the 911. What's your take on that? because the 911 has, you know, um, is a little bit thicker in the rear, especially it's more elegant. The interior very well processed, especially for the box and the Cayman, you also now get a lot of different seat choices, which are also sustainable, as I told you about that earlier. So that's also different to the 911, where you don't have so many choices. Infotainment system update is very good. The Comfort is, considering it's small sports car, also relatively okay course it will not be your friend for long time road trips but I mean if you go for the standard seats it's probably also the best choice then um, here again we had today the sports seats the sports plus seats driving wise there is no match for this vehicle Cayman and Boxster both are so great in handling with the midship engine concept they are so great to turn around so well to control and this is really leading all, all competitors and also internally the 911. If you want to play around with it, you can do it, but you can also drive safely with it. And that's also something which I uh, did not found out in the very launch of that vehicle, but in driving this a little bit longer now, as you know, test week we have here at home. This one here gives you a vintage car feeling without being unmodern. And I think this is something I, I rarely find with any other vehicles and the four cylinder helps exactly you know yes it's not this six cylinder big sound anymore however if you want to have it loud you can have the option of sport exhaust but I mean if you enjoy landscape and you're always driving somewhere where people are you can always understand you know even if you like as a sports car enthusiast you sound yourself what about others you know yeah you can say oh you don't care but, but I mean we try to get along with each other, don't we? And the thing is that this four cylinder sound also reminds me a little bit, you know, exactly of the VW Beetle, but not in a bad sense. But this stresses the feeling that 
you somehow feel that you are driving a very classic, somehow vintage car from some elements. You see it in the front, then maybe a little bit of the engine sound and of the layout of the car. But then again, you have a super modern car with super great handling, steering, uh, modern infotainment and stuff. And then maybe you can combine both purposes. So this was also interesting key finding for me here today. A lot of thoughts about this vehicle. <laughs> Tell me everything, not only about this color, everything you think about this car, also comparison to Cayman or the 911, to other comparisons in the segment. All of your comments below there. Let's discuss this vehicle. And I hope you enjoyed this special episode with me with Thomas. And I'll also see you at the very next episode.